This morning we have gathered to celebrate a very special time in the life of Tiffany Morgan. She is here today declaring her relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, baptism does not save us, but baptism declares that we have embraced the one who saves us. It is both a picture of what God has done in that we have died to ourself and God is raising us up to live a life for him, a new life in Christ. And it is also a statement of prophecy that one day we will die, but God will raise us up those of us who have put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. And so this morning, I ask you as Tiffany and Jody share in their baptism, that you reflect upon your life relationship with Jesus. Tiffany, would you like to make your profession? Jesus is Lord. Okay. Tiffany, in obedience to the commands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in Him as Savior, I baptize you, my little sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jody Smith is standing before you. She, too, has embraced Christ as her Savior. And her desire is to live her life for the Lord. And that her life be used by the Lord for His kingdom's agenda. Jody, would you like to make your profession? Jesus is Lord. Okay, hold on to my arm. Okay. Jody, in obedience to the commands of our Lord and Savior, and upon your profession of faith in Him as your Savior, it is my privilege to baptize you, my little sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And friends, my prayer is that each one of us would live each day declaring Jesus Lord in our lives. Amen? Let's continue to worship. Good morning. Wow, it's great to be here this first Sunday of 2020. Isn't it great? And that you have come to worship with us. We are excited about that. Let me draw your attention to our bulletin this morning. We are back to normal. All six sides, I guess you could say it. Two sides, normal bulletin, very excited. If you look at the front, you'll see that we are back on track with our schedule. We've got lots of things planned. Hope that you will take part in that this year. We hope that you will make Bible study a priority for 2020 and really be involved in everything that we have to offer wherever you can. And uh, we have things for the youth, for the music, for the adults, for the preschool, for the children, all types of stuff going on. And if you are a visitor today, we're excited that you are here. You are a special guest. And we want to invite you to take the communication tab that we have on the program, on the bulletin. I can't say program, can I? That would be really wrong. On the bulletin and just separate it. Just like this. Go ahead. Make all the noise you want. It's fine. Just tear it apart and fill it out for us. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And when you get done, just fold it. And as you leave, place it in the offering plate. That's really all that we want from you this morning is just to share a little bit about yourself if you want. And we, as the staff, we will be in touch with you if you want us to. And also, whether you are a guest or a member, if you want to share your prayer request with us, we would love to know what that is so that we can pray with you and for you this week. Those prayers will be kept confidential with the staff. And again, put those on the back side and fold those, put them in the offering plate on the way out. At this time, join with me in prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time to be here in your house. Lord, we thank you for these baptismal testimonies this morning. 
that once we are saved and trusting Christ as Savior, we follow that decision with believers' baptism. And Father, if there are others today who need to take that same stand that they've trusted Christ as Savior but not yet been baptized, we would love for you to work in their heart and to use these testimonies today to show that your will is for us to follow in obedience to your word, Father. We thank you, Father, for today and for the songs that lead us to you, direct our hearts to you, and your word that really convicts our heart, Father. Use your word mightily today and your songs and help us to focus on you so that when we leave here, we are not the same as when we came in, but we are more like you, Father. In Jesus' strong, powerful, saving name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Yes, we owe it all to Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for all you did at Calvary's cross. When we were so detached... And in the midst of all of our busyness, when we become so aloof, unfocused, lost in the midst of the rush, struggling with the pressures and the stress of life, in the midst of it all, Father, you had your heart upon us. And not only in your heart, but with your own person, you came to us. You have met us in the midst of all of our confusion. You came to us and you have called to us a call of hope and life deliverance Father you saved us through Jesus thank you Father thank you for what you're doing in the heart and life of these your people I lift them to you asking that you continue your work bring peace true peace and rest mentally, spiritually, and physically. Bring yourself to us now again and help us to remember that you did not abandon, but you came to us. Thank you, Father, for Jesus in whose wonderful and precious name we pray. Amen. Take your copy of God's Word and join me in the book of Hebrews for just a moment. I will be picking up our study through the book of Hebrews in these next several weeks. And this morning we come to chapter 9. I ask you to consider with me Verses 11 through 14 of chapter 9. Let me read it for us to put things into focus. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal salvation and redemption. Sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer, sanctify for the purification of the flesh. How much, if that is true, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, how much more will that purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Well, 
There's a comparison here being made. And it's not so much a comparison as it is a contrast. It is a contrast between the blood of goats and bulls, as verse 13 begins, for if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer, if those things sanctified and brought purity, how much more would the blood of Christ bring purity and holiness and literally transform us from a life of death and existence of death, frustration, hopelessness, how much more would the blood of Christ transform us to life and hope with a promise? Well, think with me about his own blood. The scripture says, with his own blood, in verse uh, 12, of his own blood, Jesus first approached God on your behalf. Look at the scripture. Verse 12 is very clear here. It says, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of his own blood, uh, by the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood. He entered once for all, for all time, and for all people. Jesus entered once for all, the scripture says, into the holy places. The holy place. What made the place holy? It was the presence of God. And verse 24 makes this even more clear. Look at verse 24 of chapter 9. It says, For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. You see, the scripture teaches us that Jesus Christ, with his own blood, did a work for you and me. And the first thing he did for you you and me is that he entered into that holy place. It says, Jesus approached God on your behalf. Jesus had no needs. He was perfect. He was with the Lord, but he walked away. He walked out of that precious place we call heaven with the presence of God. In the midst of that, he left his dwelling and came to us because he cares for you. And he paid with his own blood the ultimate price to do for you and for me what we could not do for ourselves. And that is what we have come to remember today. That Christ with his own blood, he gave his life in death. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He paid our sin debt with his own life. And for that, we are, we are grateful and can rejoice this morning. But think with me about his own blood, the scripture. Let's focus a little more intently here. Look at what else is communicated to us and, and for us in this passage about the blood of Jesus. Not only did Jesus approach God on your behalf to do for you what you could not do for yourself, but the scripture teaches that Jesus secured an eternal redemption. Look at verse 12. The very last statement, thus securing an eternal redemption. What does that mean for you and for me? I'll tell you what it means for me. It means that what I have that is but temporary, fleeting, present in time only, Jesus Christ came and he secured for me something that is not merely in time, but in eternity. For all eternity, he has provided a salvation, a deliverance, a redemption that is eternal, not temporal. It's not about now. It is about forever. 
Jesus Christ was not nearsighted in his ministry. The work that God came to do in Christ was not temporal in nature, although it impacted time. He came to do an eternal work, a work in your heart and mine that would provide for us a relationship with the Lord God for all eternity. It is an eternal redemption, not temporary. Eternal. It is an eternal redemption. And the scripture goes on. It talks even more clearly about the work of Christ. Not only did Jesus with his own blood approach the Father, the Lord God, on our behalf. And not only did he come and secure an eternal redemption. The scripture says in verse 14, look, how much more will the blood of Christ Purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. There's a little parenthetical statement in the middle of that verse. Look at it. It says, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God. That is the essence. That is what he was. He was pure. And he offered himself to God. That's what he did. That was the essence of his coming. But what was the consequence of his coming? The consequence, the, 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 the benefit, the product, what he produced for you and me with his coming and what he did was an eternal salvation, redemption that will purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that Jesus transforms you from death to life. That's what he came to do, to transform you from a life of death to a life of of eternal life. Not an end, but an eternal life with God, secured by Jesus Christ. And the power, the power of what Christ did at Calvary has a an effect on you and me today. It has a temporal effect significance in time starting now right now when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior not only is our sin forgiven and not only are we purified and not only are we made right with God and not only do we inherit an eternal redemption and not only does God give to us his spirit to live within us to be our guide our counsel our help our encouragement but friend God transforms the way you live the things you do and where you find joy and what brings delight to you will be transformed and let me give you an example in my own life before I was saved I lived for me Everybody around me, in my perspective, in my mind, they were there to bring pleasure and delight to me. It was all about me. And I have a hunch that most of you would be able to share the same testimony that before you came to Christ and before he saved you and brought that life change into your existence, you lived for yourself, didn't you? Because that's who we are. We are a self-centered, self-focused, self-governed, self-serving, self-pleasing. It's all about self. That's life without Christ. But when Christ broke through and I understood 
what he had to offer and what I was missing because the more I saw, the more I did and the more I, I engaged, the, the more frustrated I became with my own life because I thought this would make me happy and this would bring pleasure to me. And for a moment I would be happy but it would pass. And for a moment I would find pleasure but it would pass. And everything I latched hold of Every pursuit I engaged was short-lived. And I continued to face my frustration and emptiness and struggle. Do you know what happened? In my brokenness and hurt and the pain of this haunting, guilty conscience, I turned to Christ. And he saved me. And all of a sudden things that I thought were good and pleasurable and where I found delight, I no longer found delight. I no longer found that desirable. And God began to change the taste of my life and the direction of my life. And he'll do the same for you. And friend, that's the difference Jesus makes. Let me place one thing before you. Friend, if you, if your life has never been transformed, and if your wants and desires are the same as they have been through the years, years without Christ, you've never been saved. You've never been saved. Because I can assure you that you will have a heart for God. You will have a heart, a desire for God's work. You will want to know what the Lord, your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to do. You want to please God. You will have a thirst, a hunger, a desire, a passion for God that nothing else will satisfy except the Word of God, worshiping with the people of God and serving the Lord God and giving yourself sacrificially in worship to God fleshed out every day of your life in daily service, daily activity. It becomes an act of worship, the worship of your God because what you do, you're doing for Him. You want, to, you want others to know Him the way you've come to know Him. If you haven't experienced that, friend, you're not saved. You're just not saved. You can't tell me the Spirit of God and the God can come into your heart and life and do a radical transformation forgive you for your sin and you not know it. And you not show it by your behavior? Friend, if you're still drinking from the same fountain, eating from the same foods, and playing the same games, you don't know my Jesus. Amen. You just don't know him. I sure wish you did know him. And this morning we've come to remember our Jesus. What he did for us. And what he continues to do for us. And my prayer is that you can truly remember, remember, with his blood, he approached God on your behalf. With his blood, he secured an eternal redemption for you and with his blood he transforms you from life uh, from death to life amen? amen you may be here and you're not a member of our church you may be a, a guest you're in town visiting family or you, you just happen to sh you be in town and you wanted to come worship God and you and God God brought you here could I just extend to each one of you a personal invitation. If you're my brother in Jesus, if you're my sister in Jesus, would you please join with me and with your brothers and sisters in remembering and participating in this remembrance of our Savior's death, His precious blood.
Would you join with us for this? We have men prepared to serve. Guys, would you come on down? We have men prepared to serve and, and they're going to be coming by with the plates of bread and with the cups of juice. And if you're my brother, you're my sister, I want you to join with us in this time of remembrance, okay? And we shall remember that it was with his own blood that he did a work for us to bring transformation to our lives. What a Savior. What a Savior. Our Jesus. It was the evening before his betrayal and arrest that he took bread, he blessed it, broke it, gave it to his men with instructions to eat. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to bless the bread that we are about to receive. Uh, we thank you for what it represents. We thank you for the body of Christ, for the body that was abused, a body that was given sacrificially to do a work for us. A work we didn't understand, but a work that we are so grateful for today. Thank you, Father, for coming to us in a way that we could relate and understand. Lord, bless the bread now as we remember our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. broke it in half symbolic of what was about to take place to his body to the one he gave a piece and to the other eat this bread is my body given for you He took the cup, blessed it, and passed it. Father, we thank you for the cup we are about to receive. We ask you to bless it. Bless in a way that would help us remember that Jesus suffered severely was crushed. His blood dripped to the dirt, shed, spilled, poured out for us. O oh, Father, bless the cup that we would never forget the blood of Christ. In whose name we pray, amen. amen.
so Christ passed the cup. And as they took the cup, each one, one at a time, took a sip. Passed the cup to the next. But with each sip from the cup, they really didn't understand. They did not understand the significance. It was different. They'd already shared the Passover. What does this cup mean? Today you know. It was the cup of His blood with which he would secure a new covenant with which he would pay our sin debt, a debt that you could not pay for yourself, but God, because of his love for you, came and he did for you what was so painful, so hard, So as we take the cup this morning, remember, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Amen? Amen. As the men left that night, perhaps even questioning among themselves as they made their way to the garden, what does this mean? And I ask you, what does this mean for you? For your life, what will you do with Jesus? Will you take your stand with him? Will you declare Jesus Lord in your life? Would you follow him in believer's baptism? Would you embrace the body for which he gave his life to establish the church, the body of Christ? Would you connect with that body? Would you declare Christ first, priority, Lord? in your life. Savior and Lord, that's my Jesus. And we extend an invitation to everyone here this morning to make that declaration today. Today. Don't waste the cup of opportunity. Seize the moment now and let's stand together declaring Jesus Savior and Lord. Amen? Amen. Will you respond? Let's stand together. As we share in this time of invitation, friend, would you come? Come. Connect with Jesus. Connect with the body of Christ. Come today. Make the most of this cup of opportunity. Would you come now? Would you be seated for just a moment? Kitty, come here. In just a moment, we're going to uh, close with my song. Okay? My song. I get to sing my song about four or five times a year with everybody. But we have a challenge. I don't know how many of you are aware. Roger Logan. Now, don't, don't laugh. But the Wednesday night men know him as legend. Okay? Legend. The Roger Logan. Roger has faced such a challenge with his health. Roger has been in ICU, was in ICU for several days. Uh, not sure that he was going to live. 
he's living. And uh, I told him the other day, I said, Roger, you can't kill a weed. No. <laughs> well, we were laughing, you know. <laughs> he's a legend, you have to understand. But both of us knew his condition was and is still grave. Well, Kitty has been navigating between work and the hospital. But God has impressed upon her a little word, a challenge, and I want you to hear from my girl's heart. Um, this week has reminded me how frail life is, how none of us has the guarantee that we're going to make it home this afternoon. And I don't care how young you are, I don't care how fit you are, I don't care how longevity runs in your family, none of us has the guarantee. And so God just, I told him, I feel like I need to grab a microphone everywhere I go and remind people, because this is what's got us through this week. If you do not know my Savior is your Savior, if you don't know that when your heart beats the last beat, in a twinkling of an eye, you're going to be in the presence of your Savior. And when I say no, I don't just mean, well, I hope so. It's not good enough. Well, I think so. That's not good enough. I've been to church all my life. That's not good enough. I've told people I'm saved for 50 years. Not good enough. If you don't know, if you can't close your eyes now and imagine that it's going to happen, if you don't know him, if you haven't accepted him as Lord and Savior, taken that blood and that, that eternal redemption that was bought, if you haven't accepted that gift and given your life to Christ, then you don't know that's going to happen. And so don't let pride being in the middle of the aisle so you can't get out. Don't let anything stop you from not leaving this building before you know for sure that you're going to spend eternity in heaven with me and Roger and our Savior. Because um, that's all that matters. Amen. That is all that matters. Um, and so, you know, if you need to get out of the aisle, well, people will let you out. They'll probably hold your hand and come down there with you. Just do not leave here without knowing for sure, declaring not a shadow of a doubt where I'm going to spend eternity. And the way we know is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's embrace Christ, the life-transforming Savior, my Jesus. Well, uh, who said women can't preach? <laughs> huh? Who said, you preaching female, you? I love it. I love it. Let me tell you, everybody has a message. And all of us are ministers. And I'm going to give Brother Matthew his microphone back because I'm bearing two right now. And Lord knows two too many. we don't need two of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, youth. Youth. <laughs> Friend, we are one in Christ. And there is one bond that binds us together in our Savior. I want to invite you to stand with me and let's sing together.